Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to our EU Passports for Brits um, webinar. We're already in a, in a post-Brexit era, even though it's the 1st of February, where effect, the official date uh, will be for the UK to leave the EU. But it's the 1st of January, which is the effective date of the new trading agreement between the UK and the EU. And uh, we're now facing with you know, certain restrictions, a few restrictions really compared to what we had when accessing the EU. And today we'll cover you know, how we can uh, fix those restrictions and actually get those EU passports. So um, today we're going to discuss who we are at Holborn Assets and Holborn Pass. Um, we'll explain um, what were the, uh, you know, the, what access we had to the EU pre-Brexit and now what the new access we have post-Brexit. Uh, we'll explain what citizenship and residency by investment is. And um, we'll explain the easiest way to get that EU passport, which is through the Portuguese Golden Visa. And then we'll explain briefly uh, the, the project that we have in the Algarve that's exclusive uh, to us that qualifies as an investment for the Portuguese Golden Visa. And then we'll explain the new Golden Visa rules uh, that will be effective in July 2021. And then we'll finalize with a Q&A. So please, any questions that you have, uh, please feel free to type them up in the chat or in the Q&A and we'll make sure that we answer them at the end of our webinar. And anything further, we can always do a, a Zoom call with you. So um, Holborn Assets, we're a global wealth management company. We've been going since 1998. Uh, we're a British family run firm headquartered uh, here in Dubai, where I'm based. We have over 500 employees across our 11 international offices in Europe, Middle East, Africa, and Asia. And we have over 20,000 very, very happy clients, as you can see from our reviews on Trustpilot and um, also from our um, awards uh, given to us by the International Investment Magazine, which is the equivalent of the Oscars in the, growth, in the uh, wealth management um, industry. Um, Holborn Pass is just one division of Holborn Assets, and we specialize in uh, citizenship and residency by investment programs. So investments that give you uh, mobility benefits, essentially. So my name is Pablo Ostrich. I'm a partner here at Holborn Asset, responsible for our citizenship and residency by investment division. Uh, from my side, I am qualified in international business uh, in the UK. I have got some further qualifications in uh, wealth management with a Chartered Institute for Securities and Investments in London and with the Investment Migration Council in Geneva in investment migration. Um, Barbara, who is joining us uh, today uh, from, from Lisbon. Hi, Barbara. Uh, and also, Antonio, how are you? Good, good morning to you. I think it's 9 a.m., uh, if I'm not mistaken, there in, uh, in Lisbon. And um, we have you know, people all over the world, some, some joining us in Hong Kong, where it's currently 5 p.m. Um, so Barbara and Antonio are the, the two main partners at Pax Legal in, in Lisbon. And uh, from Barbara's side, um, she has a law degree from the Universidad Luisada de Lisboa. Apologies for my pronunciation. Uh, and then some further um, you know, postgraduate qualifications in tax law, copyright law and administrative litigation. And uh, the, the practice specializes in immigration law and real estate law. So let's get going. Um, I think a good place to start is by explaining uh, the four uh, key uh, freedoms of the EU, right? The essence of the EU is the four freedoms, the movement uh, of goods, the freedom of movement of services, freedom of movement of capital and freedom of movement of people. And these four freedoms are the core part of the EU and every uh, EU member has to adhere and abide by these four uh, key uh, movements. And the UK joined the EU in, in 1975. And since 1993, these four movements, um, sorry, these four freedom of movements uh, were uh, essential. Now in Brexit, um, the, the, it was actually the freedom of movement of people that, that led to, to Brexit, right? Uh, UK wanted to limit the amount of Europeans that could just come in and live in the uh, in the UK. And essentially, that's what uh, drove uh, Brexit. Today, I'm not going to get into, you know, the politics of Brexit, the advantages, the disadvantage on a macroeconomic or, or political level. Um, what I am going to get into is, say, the facts and, and the, um, the, the benefits, if you like, to the individual, not so much, as I said, but the macro level. So because of the freedom of movement, any uh, individual in the EU is able to just go and live in any of the, of the other 27 EU countries, 
right? So um, by limiting this now with the UK, it has to be reciprocal. So these were the previous benefits, if you like, that any UK citizen had uh, in the EU and any current EU citizens still have. So we, you know, as a Brit, we could just go and live to, to Portugal or to Germany and just, you know, uh, live there or to any of the other 27 EU countries. We could retire uh, to Spain. I mean, I grew up in Spain and, you know, there's, I don't know, I'd say hundreds of thousands, at least tens of thousands of Brits uh, in, in Spain and Portugal and Greece and uh, Cyprus. Uh, we could work in any of the 27 EU countries. Uh, from my side, I, I studied in the UK and then I, uh, I worked in Spain. I, I, I then studied in, in France as part, of my, as part of my bachelor's. So these were all benefits that we could access uh, without the need to get any special permits, any visas, any uh, requirements. These were part of the freedom of movement of the EU. As part of the freedom of goods, services, capital, we could also open up businesses anywhere in the EU, and we could travel freely amongst the 27 uh, EU countries. So this was pre-Brexit, um, you know, what, um, what we could do or what any EU uh, passport holder can do. Now the Brexit has happened. And as I said, we're trading on the uh, agreement effective from the 1st of January. So these benefits are no longer available uh, as an EU citizen. We can no longer just go and live in the EU, work in the EU uh, or retire to the EU without very special or specific permits. And this has now been replaced um, with uh, 90 days uh, that we can spend in the EU visa-free out of 180 days. Anything further than this, we need to get specific visas. And if we want to access all of these benefits, we're going to have to get an EU passport. So um, how can we get uh, an EU passport? Well, uh, there's different ways where you can obtain citizenship. You can be born in a specific country. For example, if you're born in the United States, you can get uh, an, uh, an American passport. However, if you're listening to this webinar, this option is probably uh, a little bit too late. Um, if you uh, for example, if your parents are from a specific country, my mother is from Spain, um, so I always had my, my British passport. When Brexit happened, um, I applied and I got my uh, Spanish passport. Uh, you could marry into a passport, uh, for example, uh, in Portugal, if you marry a Portuguese citizen and you're married with him or her for over three years, you can automatically get the Portuguese nationality. Um, another option that you can do is you can go and live in specific countries in Spain, for example, you can go and live there for 10 years and um, you can obtain the, the Spanish passport um, just by residing there, uh, you know, working there after 10 years. And then finally, uh, the, the, the fifth uh, way to get a passport is by investment, whether it's citizenship or, or residency by investment. And that's what we specialize in at, at Holborn Pass. Um, there's about 25 different government programs in the world. We work with the main 18 of them, and they all work in quite a similar fashion. As a, um, you know, you make an investment into a foreign country's economy, whether it's a real estate investment, donation business, etc. Um, or you can, um, and well, there's two types of programs. If, if it's a residency program, you'll get a residency card. If it's a passport program, you'll get a uh, passport from day one. Okay. And this industry has really ballooned in size since uh, 2011 and more and more people from all over the world are looking to acquire either a different nationality, a different residency uh, for different reasons. Um, the, this is the country program um, index that we have at Holborn. So these are the different country programs that, that we work with uh, around the world. Okay. Now, today we focus on getting an EU passport. So these nine passports are the passports that are uh, the countries have programs available for investment. The first six are pretty much Caribbean passports. So again, not applicable to what we're looking to discuss today. Uh, Montenegro and Turkey, they're not part of the EU. So currently the only way to purchase an EU passport is to buy the Maltese uh, passport and you have to make a donation of 760,000 euros to the Maltese government, right? Meaning that you don't see that money uh, ever again. Lastly, we had the, the Cyprus program, but that closed and that required you to make a 2 million euro investment into Cypriot real estate. This is just to highlight the value of that EU passport is, you know, the equivalent of donation of, you know, three quarters of a million euros. OK, so this is one way to do it. Getting a, a, a passport by investment in Malta takes about a year to get. 
The other way to do it is to go via one of the residency programs that can become a passport, as you see on the first row here. Um, it can become, you know, five to 10 years, you can get an EU passport. However, in all of the EU countries, you need to live there for those five to 10 years, of typically over six months a year uh, to get that EU passport with the exception of Portugal. So if you see here in the physical uh, stay time for citizenship row for Portugal, you only need to visit Portugal for a total of five weeks in that five year period. So essentially two holidays to Portugal in year, for example, in year two and in year four, and then in year five, uh, assuming you meet uh, uh, some other conditions, uh, you will get your EU passports. Okay, so you have to buy a property, hold it for five years, in year five, assuming you meet these conditions, you're qualified to get your EU passport. So for this reason, the fact that you don't have to move to Portugal uh, compared to Spain or any of the other countries um, is a reason why Portugal is by far the most popular golden visa program and is the easiest route and most popular route to get an EU passport. You know, if we're comparing it to Malta, where you have to invest, you know, well, not even invest, donate uh, three quarters of a million euros. So for that reason, um, let's dive into, into Portugal then, and I'll just explain the Portuguese Golden Visa uh, and uh, the options available here. So if you're British, chances are you've probably been on holiday to, to Portugal, but in case you haven't, um, you know, Portugal is, is being voted as the most welcoming country uh, for expats in the world. Over 70% of the population speak English. Uh, it has the third lowest crime rate in the world. For three years in a row, it's been voted the best retirement destination, uh, again, in the world. It's good food, good wine, good weather, and a good value for, for money. Uh, Portugal likes to encourage people to uh, come and live in Portugal. And for the first 10 years, um, uh, any people who, who move to Portugal will benefit from uh, a, a low uh, tax regime, meaning that the foreign income uh, that you bring into Portugal will be taxed at a very low rate. Portugal has the 12th best public healthcare system in the world. Uh, the UK is the NHS, which again is very, very good, is the 18th to give a, a point of contact. And it also has the, one of the best education systems in the world. So um, that's just a quick introduction about Portugal. In terms of the Portuguese Golden Visa, it's a very tested program. It's been going since 2012. It's brought over 5 billion euros of foreign direct investment into Portugal. Over 8,000 families have gotten their golden visas. Over 24,000 um, people have already gotten their golden visas. As long as you're not part of the EU and you don't have a criminal record, you can apply and you can include your spouse, you can include your children and you can include your parents in the same application. So this is uh, a very new program for Brits because uh, you know prior to uh, January 1st, uh, well, Brits could just go and live in Portugal, right? And, and we didn't need anything else. And we were part of the EU, so we couldn't apply for the golden visa. Now that the UK is out of the EU, this program is now open to Brits. And to qualify for the golden visa program, you typically have to make an investment into real estate. And there's two main categories at the moment. If you invest half a million euros, you can buy, you know, whatever you want. And if uh, that, that amount is lowered uh, to 350,000 euros if you refurbish a building that's 30 years or older. And then there's some uh, variations of these categories and, and I'll explain them in, in just a second. But these are the main ones. Another option is to invest into a fund, a sort of private equity venture capital fund. Um, but, you know, typically this is higher risk and, um, you know, has a lower um, exit, um, well, ha has a longer exit strategy, typically seven to, to 10 years. So 95% of our clients <clears throat> tend to go for the real estate. So, um, you know, we help to, um, to, we help you to obtain your golden visa cards and say we started today in six to eight months, we'd have uh, the golden visa cards in, in your hands. And from that moment, you're able to live and work in Portugal. You can travel freely around all the Schengen countries. You can open up a business in any of the Schengen countries. Uh, if you move to Portugal, you can also benefit from the 10 year non habitual tax regime and you can access the uh, healthcare education uh, benefits of Portugal. Now, from the moment you get those cards, your five year clock starts ticking until when you can apply for the Portuguese passport. And um, in year five, that's when you can request your Portuguese passport. 
And as long as you meet two key uh, criteria, uh, you will get your uh, Portuguese passport as per the Portuguese law. So you need to visit Portugal a total of five weeks in that five year period. Typically recommend that in year two and in year four, when you're renewing the golden visa cards, you go and visit for two and a half weeks to Portugal and um, you know, enjoy a nice holiday there. And that will tick off the requirements to get your uh, Portuguese passport in year five. The second requirement is to have an A2 language level, which is the second most basic level of Portuguese. It's not intermediate, it's a basic level of Portuguese. Typically, you can take a multiple choice test, and as long as you get 55% uh, on the test, um, you uh, will get that requirement ticked off um, and be able to get your, your Portuguese passport. So you have six years, five, six years to learn the, the, the language, a very basic level of the language. You can attend a, a certified Portuguese language school, um, you know, wherever you're resident in the world and, um, you know, uh, get that level. So at this point, you have what's the fourth best passport in the world. Again, you know, travel to 185 countries visa free, very similar to the, the British one. Um, but the most important benefit, and which is the reason that uh, we're getting a lot of demand uh, from our clients around the world who want to retire to Europe, who want to access Europe, who want their kids to have uh, European passports and be able to access those other 27 countries, um, is that you can live and work uh, in any of the 27 countries with that Portuguese passport. So uh, we help you from beginning to end. Um, you know, this is the process until we get your golden visa cards. Um, I won't really, you know, dive deep into this now, but, you know, with Zooms, with digital signatures and with couriers, we're able to do pretty much most of the heavy work for you. Um, you only need to visit Portugal once, and that's once your application has been approved, just to go and do the biometrics. Um, which is just doing the fingerprints and uh, the, the pictures in, in Portugal. And, you know, Barbara and Antonio can uh, help you and accompany you uh, to, uh, to, to do those. Uh, obviously, prior to that, there's a lot of work that, that has to be done. But, uh, you know, in six to eight months, we can get your um, golden visa cards delivered to you. So that's just about the timeline, the process of the golden visa. Now, if we look at the real estate options that are available today, um, these are about to change from July the 1st onwards, and, and Barbara will shortly explain what the new changes are, are, are going to be. So I don't want to, uh, you know, steal her thunder. However, these are the current um, uh, entry levels, okay? And these are pretty much going to double uh, from the 1st of July. So if you want to buy a new build in Lisbon, for example, you're going to have to buy uh, a 1 million euro apartment. Uh, and 350 is going to increase again to, to high levels. So uh, realistically, we have to like the 1st of April to still access these, um, these prices. And there's nothing we can do about it. This is the Portuguese uh, uh, law changing. So um, our most popular category really is, is this third category, which is just a variation of the second, which is if you refurbish a building that's 30 years or older, but it's in a low density area, then the investment drops down to 280,000 euros. And we find that, you know, 90% of our clients tend to go for this category as opposed to uh, the, the two above ones. At the end of the day, what you want is, um, you know, to uh, getting the, the EU passport as, as cost effectively as, as possible. And we at Holborn, um, we've got what we like to say a further category, even though it's just a variation really of, of the third category, which is, um, uh, you know, we were able to, uh, with a property exclusive to us in the Algarve, lower this entry level to 250,000 euros, um, and um, which is essentially 225,000 uh, pounds in the UK. So um, I'll just introduce quickly our, our project uh, in, in the Algarve, uh, which is uh, again, shouldn't qualify because the Algarve is a prime real estate area. And this project, which is now at say 250, is gonna become half a million as of uh, July the 1st. So uh, the Algarve, for whoever doesn't know about it, but I imagine most of you will, um, you know, if, you, if you're uh, British, um, you know, it, it's, it's been voted the world's leading beach destination uh, in the world. It has over 300 sunny days uh, a year and some of the best golf courses um, in, in the world. So it's a lovely place to retire, to spend some time there. And um, it's a very, very touristic uh, location. As I said, it's the world's leading beach destination. 
uh, as voted by the World Travel Awards. And our project, um, which is one minute from the sea, uh, and it's on a hill, so it has full sea views, is there in Abu Feira. Uh, there's basically two unit prices, one at 350, one at 295. 350 got full sea views, 295 has got a, like a side view. Um, our investors, our clients own the, the apartment, they own their title deed apartment. And when they buy the property at 295,000 euros, they enter into a rental agreement with the developer that the developer is going to manage that project, that, um, that uh, property for them for the next five to six years. And in return for that agreement, uh, the developer will pay our clients back 45,000 euros, i.e. 15% um, rental. So 3% rental return per year for five years, 15% rental return paid upfront back to our clients. So, um, you know, you invest 295,000 euros today, five days later, you're getting 45,000 euros back, which is how we're saying that, you know, 250,000 euros is your net position, if you like, after uh, you buy the property. This uh, is, is, hassle, is, is a hassle-free solution. So again, it's fully managed for you. The rental's paid up front. And in year five, when you're getting your passports, you're getting your uh, money back. There's a buyback guarantee for the same purchase price, say 295,000 euros. So uh, you put in 295 today, five days later, you're getting 45,000 euros back. And when you're getting your passports, you get your 295,000 euros back. Um, and then, you know, are free to, to do whatever you want with, with your money. Um, so that's it in terms of, uh, our, you know, this is our, our main, um, <clears throat> our most popular investment. Um, these are just some pictures of, um, you know, it's one minute from the beach. Um, you can see what the refurbishment inside is going to look like. The building is already built. So it's just about, you know, refurbishing the interiors. Um, very high quality finishes. I have a gym, a sauna and a, a rooftop pool. And the owners of the apartments, you can actually go and stay there for one to two weeks for free as part of the uh, as part of the deal. Um, and when you're visiting Portugal, you can stay here. Um, it's got a rooftop pool, as a rooftop sauna, rooftop gym, bar. Um, here you can see it's another angle. You can see the the swimming pool at the bottom, the 24-hour reception, and uh, the restaurant and the bar and just some other pictures of the swimming pool. So um, that's it from me. Um, hopefully, uh, you know, I've explained well what the new regime is now for Brits, uh, why the Portuguese Golden Visa program is the easiest way to obtain uh, an EU passport. And um, I'll leave over to Barbara to explain just the, the, the changes to the Golden Visa law that are gonna happen on July 1st, but <clears throat> Realistically, what they mean for, for our clients is that 1st of April is the absolute cutoff date to um, access the Portuguese Golden Visa at the current prices. So, for example, our property, which is going at, at 250 from July the 1st onwards for the same benefit of the uh, Golden Visa will be half a million euros uh, capital investment. So, um, Barbara, uh, if you could um, just unmute. And uh, I'll leave it over to you. Tell me when to click uh, the slides. So uh, good morning or good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Barbara, as uh, Pablo already said. Um, I'm a lawyer in Lisbon and I deal with this program from the beginning uh, of it. So since uh, final 2012. Uh, we have been uh, very successful uh, in our job. We have 100% uh, rates uh, of, um, for the Golden Visa and for others, uh, for other, um, uh, for citizenship and other um, investment. Uh, I think. No, no. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, for other uh, residence permits, that's it. Uh, and uh, um, with um, what respect to Golden Visa, we have done around 470 all successful uh, residence permits. Um, 
Um, so uh, Pablo has already talked about the, the current regime and I am going to tell you about the, the changes that will happen in July 1st, 2021. Uh, it will increase the, the investment in some uh, areas. So um, the best thing is to, uh, to do the investment uh, as soon as possible to take advantage of the, the current regime. So Pavel, I would ask you to uh, pass the slide. Thank you. So uh, the changes will apply only to um, the residential um, real estate properties uh, that are not located in inland territories and uh, in the islands of Azores and Madeira. That means that um, the golden visa will remain the same for real estate for commerce and services in areas in uh, all areas of Portugal, including Lisbon and Porto, and for the real uh, the residents real estate located in inland territories of Sousa and Madeira, as I said uh, just a second ago. Uh, yeah, can we move for the next slide? So uh, the current conditions, as Pablo said already, is uh, um, for acquisition of real estate in amount. Uh, of 500,000 uh, or greater, or in other hand, acquisition of real estate property built at least 30 years ago or located in an urban rehabilitation area for refurbishment in total amount of 350,000 or higher. Um, so these properties for now can be acquired in every uh, area of Portugal, okay, for housing, for commerce, and for services. Uh, and this will remain like this only until June 13th, 2021. Uh, from July 1st, 2021, we'll have uh, another regime that I would ask Pablo to, to move forward. Yes. That is a transitional period that goes from uh, July 2021 to June 2022. So in this period, what um, there will be already um, some conditions in the investment, namely in the, in, in the residential real estate property. So uh, the, the residential real estate property that is located in the metropolitan areas of Lisboa and Porto will increase for, from uh, 500,000 to 1 million. Uh, and uh, in other municipalities uh, of inter-municipal communities, the, the, the amount will increase also from 500,000 to 700, uh, 750,000. Uh, the, the real estate that is built at least uh, three, 30 years ago um, and the located in the metropolitan areas of Porto and the intermunicipality communities will rise from 350,000 to 500,000 and the inland territories and Malaya and the source will continue the same. Um, they will still have a discount of 20% for the real estate properties located in root stretch area, low density areas. Um, and the minimums will go so for the 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 properties that will cost seven hundred and fifty thousand, the investment will go uh, from the, uh, the this amount to six hundred thousand, and the the uh, real estate property that costs five hundred thousand will cost four hundred thousand, and the properties that cost three hundred and fifty will cost two hundred and eighty. So this is what happens, for instance, with the Dom Jumaris property. Um, it's located in Algarve. Uh, it's a really, really nice place. And it has the advantage of being the most uh, cheap uh, price for uh, the investment. 
So can we can we change the slide? Thank you. In the final period, uh, what will happen is that the uh, you will only be able to invest for commercial purposes and services. Okay, and this regime will remain remain as the current with the current conditions. So five hundred thousand in most properties. 350,000 for refurbishments and the discount of 20% for uh, new stitch areas of a low, den of low density. Uh, but this is only for commercial purposes and services. If you are going to buy a house, for instance, uh, then the uh, what's going to happen from July 2022 on is that you won't be able to uh, invest in the most areas of Portugal, you will only be allowed to invest in uh, the inland territories and Madeira and the such. And only there, the prices will remain the same, of course, because in the other places, you will not be able to invest. So um, I think that uh, the changes, this is the regime of the changes. Um, and I am, um, available to answer to your question. Very good. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Barbara, for, for, for that. Um, so it's a pretty much as a, as a summary. Uh, well, the new Portuguese left wing government uh, wants to uh, drive the golden visa investment into um, the rural, if you like, areas of Portugal and move it away from Lisbon, Porto and the coastline where, where the best investments are. So essentially, we have to the 1st of April uh, to access these areas and make uh, better investments. Um, I, I've mentioned one property that we have just because that's the most popular one. You know, depending on our clients, we can source any kind of property. Uh, but that's the reason why we're focusing on, on, on the, the lower entry one, the 280. So we'll open the floor to, to questions. Um, and Barbara, I'll make sure I pass the difficult ones uh, on to you. Um, uh, Michael Bartlett is asking uh, if the 10 year non habitual tax regime starts when you get the golden visa or when, whenever you move to Portugal. It starts when uh, the golden visa starts because only then you will be allowed to uh, go to, to the tax authority and ask for a fiscal residency. Okay, but if, if you're not tax resident in Portugal, say for the first three years, and then you move to Portugal, when would the 10 year uh, non habitual regime start? From the start of the golden visa or from year three? Didn't understand. Sorry. <laughs> the, the, uh, the 10 year non habitual tax regime, does it start when you become tax resident in Portugal or only when you uh, get your golden visa card? on day one without being tax resident when you uh, are tax resident in portugal right so when you move to portugal essentially it's when when that starts correct yes okay very good uh schengen countries can you please list these uh off the top of my head i'll probably you know be able to get come up with around 20 or 21 um but i think uh i think it'd be easier if you just type it in google schengen countries and you have your, your 26 uh, Schengen countries that, that you can access, but it, it's pretty much, uh, you know, most of Europe besides UK now and um, Ireland. Um, and uh, okay, uh, secondhand properties for um, 500,000 euros, um, we, we, can, we can purchase a secondhand property if it's above half a million euros under the current regime. From July the 1st, we'd be looking at, you know, 1 million euros in Lisbon, you know, the, these kind of areas. Um, and then from July 1st, 2022, we won't even be able to, uh, to, to, to do these investments, right? Um, now, okay, what's the impact of COVID on the two month visit for biometrics? Um, just worried that it might not be possible and we don't want to whisk, miss the, the, the window. So uh, about about now, what would happen, for example, if someone um, applied for the golden visa and um, CEF, the government, they approved the golden visa before July the 1st, um, but then they can't visit Portugal? Um, what's the situation? 
nothing happens because what the law says, what the new law will say, if it, it didn't come out yet, but what, what, what it will say is that the application must be delivered at, until June 13th, 2021. So uh, if we deliver the, the application before that, that, then there will be no problem. The, the, the investor will come to Portugal whenever it's possible. Okay, so the biometrics can be delayed until whenever it's open, right? Yes. Um, we have a few clients like this right now and it's just you know whenever covid allows whether it's the summer preferably the summer it's a nice nice nicer time to visit portugal uh, they can go um okay uh, okay um okay maybe a technical question are setubal and evora considered uh an inland or coastal uh area so from July the 1st onwards, would these two cities still qualify uh, under the low density or what? Yes. what uh, wait, wait, wait a second and I will tell you right away. Every, yes, it qualifies. Okay. And that's two balls, two balls, two balls, two balls. Yeah, with, with, with the new changes, every town is is now changed. The, you know uh, whether they yes. qualify or don't qualify. So um, we'll get an answer on it's a new diploma with, with very specific areas. Some specific areas of Setuba, right? We'll still qualify maybe for the three fifty thousand, right? Um, uh, area. Um, okay. Um, how many? Uh, it doesn't qualify. Stubal doesn't qualify. Doesn't qualify okay. No. So Stubal will be the half a million, uh, which will be the one million kind of area, right? Yeah. Okay. So one million euro for Stubal. Evora still qualifies under the lower uh, regime, starting at three fifty thousand um, investment. Um, okay. How many bedrooms uh, departments are for the lower price? So it, it's a one bedroom uh, apartment. The, the property that we showed earlier. Uh, the, say the, the Domus Maris uh, manages an apart hotel um, and again it's, it's fully managed um, so you know it's as hassle free as, as it is possible um, it's going to it seems to me that the Portuguese government is going to have a large problem in the future with the excess of properties in the Algarve that can't be sold uh, could this create a problem in the future uh, sale of the property um, well, here there's a buyback agreement, so the developer has to buy you back for the original price. Um, whilst you know the golden visa buyers won't be able to purchase in the Algarve, uh, you still have all of the other Europeans, which really count for 95% of the investment into the Algarve, that will still carry on buying into um, into the Algarve. So, we, I haven't seen the reports I've seen on the Portuguese golden visa market and the real estate market don't don't seem to indicate that. Um, uh, the 45,000 rental payment will be taxable in the UK as income. Uh, the 45,000 rental payment is, is taxable in, in Portugal um, at uh, typically around 25% tax. However, because it's a refurbishment, uh, our accountants are able to, um, uh, what, what's the word, uh, essentially yeah, to, to minimize that that cost uh, drastically, uh, because the refurbishment uh, is an exemption on the on the rental return. Um, am I right, Antonio? I think I, I, that's correct. Yes, they can, yes, they can uh, no, no. no, they can deduct that amount on the annual uh, tax payment that you when they find us the uh, tax uh, taxation the annual taxation. So it can right. be deducted. Very good, very good. Okay, uh, do clients need to buy the new development before July uh, or do they have to buy uh, with the higher requirements? Uh, so really, uh, because the application takes about three months, we want to start, we have to start uh, by April. If we start in June, we won't be able to buy the property and then apply to the government by the 1st of July. So really the cutoff is, is really 1st of April uh, to get started. Ideally, I mean, the, the, the property that I'm showing, they'll be sold out maximum by March anyway, but um, July with the cutoff for any other kind of property. 
Uh, question from David, uh, is Coimbra uh, low density, uh, Barbara Anton? Yes, and not for the moment. Coimbra is not uh, low density, but it will be, uh, let me see, let me just see. Coimbra, Coimbra some uh, counts, some councils of uh, Coimbra will be. Okay, okay. not all the, the region, but some councils of Coimbra will be. But okay. for the moment, the animals. Okay, so the minimum would be 350,000. Uh, for a refurbishment and 500,000 for a, uh, say, a new property, right? Yes, but there are a lot of councils that will be, uh, that will be uh, low density areas. Uh, uh, from, yes, do you want me to, to say some or? No, no, that, that's fine. I think we, we can always answer more specifically if we have any further Zoom calls with, with, with clients. No. Yes. Um, Yes, uh, any information that you uh, request, we, we can send uh, brochures or the units left. There's about eight units left on the Domus Maris property. Uh, <clears throat> uh, will there be any other developments coming for sale to meet the new requirements? Uh, yes, yes, there will be. Uh, but as I said, we won't be able to access the same quality areas that we have now and the prices will increase uh, from July 1st um, onwards. Um, let me see any other questions that I haven't answered. Uh, yes, we can have a full list of the coastal areas. That's that's absolutely fine. However, so <clears throat> one thing is is qualifying for the Portuguese Golden Visa, and then a, a very separate decision is finding a property where you want to retire. Because of all the restrictions that the Golden Visa has, uh, you know, it's so much easier, and it makes a lot more sense to separate those two decisions. One, qualify for the golden visa as cost effectively as possible in a good area. Five years later, when you get your money back and you've got your passport, then you can buy any property isn't subject to golden visa laws in any area that you like with a mortgage, with no mortgage. Um, that, that's by far the, the, the easiest way um, than trying to find, you know, say your dream home, your retirement home now with the current golden visa restrictions. There's just too many restrictions. Uh, and now the price is, you know, doubling uh, in, in size. Um, okay, is there, uh, so regarding tax, oh, there's a few questions on tax. Um, you know, if you're, um, okay, so yeah, would you have any global taxes, Barbara Antonio, if for example, you, just by having a Portuguese passport, um, are you gonna pay any taxes around the world? No, okay. just we only pay taxes for incomes that, um, I mean, if you if you live here, if you live here, uh, you will pay taxes on your uh, incomes, okay? But only on your incomes, the incomes that you have all, uh, around the world. But you will not pay taxes uh, on properties that you have around the world. You will not uh, pay taxes on fortune, you know? Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And, yes. and for inheritance tax, that means depends when you, if you die, if you are living in Portugal and you you are applied to the Portuguese law, then you, you can, can choose. You can choose. You can choose the regime. regime or choose a Portuguese regime, or you can choose the regime where your assets are along the, the whole world, wide world. It depends. Yeah. yeah. And then you can pass on your wealth to your immediate family, essentially tax free, right? There's no inheritance tax. Um, exactly. your immediate family. Understood, understood. I, I guess the, the, one of the main benefits that people look to go to Portugal is the non habitual tax regime, right? So maybe if you could explain um, the taxes that someone who moves to Portugal would pay on their pensions from around the world or, or you know, any tax that's there, any money that they're bringing from outside of Portugal to Portugal. Okay, so uh, uh, from pensions, uh, it will be uh, 10%. Uh, last year it was 0%, but the government just changed it. So it will be 10%. Uh, it will be 28% for um, um, real estate incomes. Uh, and uh, interests. Interests. And you should pay, you pay also tax for this. Yes. 20, 28%. Yes. 28%. Um, okay. And that, 
that's it, it's 10%, and it will be 20% if you uh, <clears throat> have your job here, okay? And if mm -hmm. you get income from your job here in Portugal, it will be a tax of 20%. Okay, okay. Which is much more or less than us that we can go to until 48%. So yeah. it's, it's not yeah. good. And that's the reason why Portugal is so popular as a retirement destination because you know, ten percent instead of forty-five percent is uh, yeah. very good. Um, so I think we pretty much covered uh, most of the questions. Um, anyone who's got any further questions, we're available to to meet on Zoom, uh, and I uh, can send you any information that that you like on um, on anything that we've uh, sent or discussed today. So uh, unless anyone has any further burning pressing questions. Uh, we'll end the webinar here. Uh, thank you, everyone, for, for attending and for, for listening to us today. Thank you, Barbara and Antonio, uh, for your expertise. And, um, yeah, I hope you all have a, a very good day.